Francis Bacon and the Idols. I am Anthony Del Cid. I am accompanied by Iris Lopez, Melissa Mendoza, and Jennifer Rodriguez. Who is Francis Bacon? Francis Bacon was born in 1561. He believes that scientists required evidence. He claimed that rhetoric's role is to recall and explain what has been discovered by other arts. The invention of speech or argument is not properly an invention, for to invent is to discover what we don't know. He developed the scientific method. He was influenced by Peter Ramus. He believed that invention and arrangement equals logic. Style and delivery equals rhetoric. He believed that logic becomes a tool for inquiry, and it fits with the growing interest in science. Francis Bacon wrote a book called The Advancement of Learning. He describes the functions of rhetoric to apply reason to imagination for the better moving of the will. He says that communication equals interaction between reason and imagination. He emphasizes on reason. Bacon believed one of the benefits of good education was eloquence, illustrating his point with many rhetoric examples drawn from his study of language, how it functions, and how it reveals the way we learn things. Bacon believed rhetoric is the clarity of communication avoid and to avoid idols. Ms. Jennifer Rodriguez, I will be talking to you about the idols of the tribe. The tribe can be described as ancestry, culture, or even society. The idol is a figment of the mind. This idol can blind its members from reality and can cause exaggerations and false appearances from within or desires, prejudice, pride, and even God. This idol states that our survival prejudice are bred into our passions and intellect. This idol can create common sense tendencies to rely upon little assumptions without actually proving they are true. You may jump to conclusions on first impressions or overgeneralized situations. For example, I have been cut off by someone in traffic. I lost it, chased after the driver, cut them off, st stopped the vehicle, and yelled unnecessary words. This example shows how I let my emotions rule over my judgment and understanding and could have led me to false appearances and conclusions. The idol of the tribe can describe people that collect ideas, become attached, and gather evidence that supports it and just throws away stuff that contradicts it. It is like science that faces this problem all the time. The tribe can be replaced with the word cave to have a better understanding of how this idol is used in every human being. The idol is cave within us and has probably been accepted with the few evidence that supports it. It is something that we see and think is real, when in the actual real world, it probably really is not. <laughs> now I will be discussing Idols of the Den. According to the book, it defines Idols of the Den as fallacies derived from living with a limited view of the experimental world. Humans live with binders and causes humans to search for knowledge in their small area instead of the large common world outside of the den. So basically, our perceptions are altered by second or third sources, and we are limited just to the knowledge that is given to us. Factors that influence our perception include family background, childhood experiences, education, gender, religion, and social class. Examples of idols of the den can vary. Family influences our perceptions greatly. Whether if it is sexism or racism, our family can either encourage or discourage our participation in these social norms. Our family could have influenced us as a child or as an adult. Family members could have experienced a traumatizing event with a certain type of race, which could lead them to embed negative thoughts about this race to our vulnerable minds. Family could also influence sexist views. For example, my family is Hispanic and they believe in old customs that men should always be the breadwinner and women should stay home and clean and take care of the kids. Family can be a dangerous source because they have the ability to influence us at such a young age. And once you are exposed at such an early age, it is difficult to change your views later on in life. 
Another example would be the difference of emotions felt by people who experienced 9-11 versus those who did not. Those that did will have a more aggressive attitude towards warfare. warfare. Basically, in all aspects of life, our perceptions can be altered by various sources. Simple examples can even be our favorite subject in school or our favorite color. Say, for example, our family could have influenced us as a child to like a certain subject just because they thought it would be better for our career in life. And maybe we just didn't like the subject, but since we were enforced at such a young age, we learned to love the subject. Or for color, our family could have put our clothes or bought us toys that were a certain color. And being exposed at such a young age, we learned to adapt to that color and we're like, you know what, that's my new favorite color. It can be simple, it can be complex, but these examples are all basically saying that our minds can be influenced and altered by outside sources. So we must be careful, and this is why it is a fallacy, because we need to know that there is an outside of the world, and there is more to know, than, and we must try to surpass our den. I know so the marketplace. Items of the marketplace are slang or conversational words. According to our article, they arise from bad and inept information of words. Some words are names for non-existent things, yet we tend to presume that these things must exist simply because they have received the name. Bacon stated that these are the most troublesome of all because words form in a popular sense and tangle themselves around our understanding and reasoning. Here are two examples that can help us remember these items more easily. The first one is the word busted. Back in the day, our grandparents referred to being busted as being broke or not having any money. Our generation has transformed the meaning and we now refer to busted as being caught doing something we probably shouldn't be doing. The second example is slang used in our favorite social media sites, such as Instagram and Twitter. The words follow and unfollow, which we find in such sites, simply mean removing or adding someone to the list of people whose posts we can view but we've added them to our everyday dictionary. And lastly, we move forward to our last idol, which is the idol of theater. The idol of theater are explanations that fool us into thinking that fiction is true. In other words, we should not believe things that the public portrays to be true. A recent example would be on the disease on Ebola. People that are uneducated about this topic assume that once infected, it would turn you into a zombie. Obviously, this is not a true statement, but since the public is repeating it, people come to believe that it might be true, when in reality, it really isn't. Another example is gossip. Oh yeah, we all love gossip, especially celebrity gossip. Gossip involves details that are not confirmed as being true only because people are saying that Channing Tatum is having an affair with newlywed Angelina Jolie does not necessarily make it true. Bacon causes the idol of theater, explanations that fool us into thinking that it is true. Today we talked about Bacon and his contribution to rhetorical practices. We provided a little bit of background on his belief that scientists require evidence and his development of the scientific method. We also talked about his book, The Advance of Learning, where he implies that the function of rhetoric is to apply reason to imagination for the better moving of the will. We also went over his belief that rhetoric is the clarity of communication. In order to create clear communication, we have to avoid idols, which are the misuse of language that equal fallacies of thinking. The idols we discussed today were Idol of the Tribe, Idol of the Den, Idol of the Marketplace, an idol of the theater. For the next activity, we will be testing your knowledge and understanding. We have provided four skits, and your job is to identify which idol belongs to each one of the videos. Pay really close attention to detail, and good luck. <sighs> I'm so tired. Hey, Mom. Hi, son. What are you cooking? Some food. Damn, I'm hungry. You know, cool. you know my, my girlfriend doesn't cook, so. Well, before we start getting to food, I want to have a conversation with you. Again? What's this about now? Marriage. Oh, my God. I don't even think about marriage right now. All I want to do is party, have fun with girls, you know, just go out. Not having to come home to a girl. You know, I come home to different girls. I can bring two, three, four girls. You know, that's just the life I want to live. But you have a girlfriend. You should be committed. 
I mean, I love her, but I really don't know if she's the one. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think you should think about this because you guys been together for a really long time, and I think it's time for you to commit to marriage. I mean, I, you know, what's marriage? Isn't that just a title? Like. No. It's something you would want in the future. I mean, I'll give it a thought, but I just want to have fun. Well, you know, I'm thankful that you're going to give it a thought, but I really want you to think about this because I don't want you to be out partying and having fun with other girls. And I want you to, you know, be a home man and have a life with a woman. And stop laughing. You shouldn't be laughing. I'm being serious here. I mean, you know, it's like, you didn't get married until you were like 35, so why are you judging me? But look, look where you you came from this. Yeah, you're right. So, I All want right. you to give it a thought. I'll think about it. Okay. Alright, thanks, Mom. If you guessed Idols of the Tribe, then you are right. I'm so sorry. I just... I don't love you. You can't buy love. I don't know if you realize that. I mean, I mean I... yeah, you've given me everything, but you don't give me what I want. You don't give me attention. You think that by giving me money and by buying me the biggest rock in the world, you'll get my love. I don't love you, Anthony. I'm sorry. When I buy you all right, so if you guessed I was at the theater, you are right. Hey, Mom. Look, I really want these new pair of Jordans that just came out. Well, I can't, son. Why not? I'm busted. What'd you do, Mom? Did you start selling weed again? What do you mean? Mom, did you rob a bank again? No, son, I'm busted. Okay, busted means that you got caught doing something you weren't supposed to do. No. Did you cheat on that? No. Busted means you're broke. I'm broke. I don't have no money. I used all my money to pay your tuition. No, 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 no. How does busted mean you're broke? It means that you got caught doing something you weren't no, supposed to do. No, it means I'm broke. I have no money. I can't buy you shoes. Not right now. <sighs> Whatever, Mom. Right. So if Idols of the Marketplace was your answer, then you are correct. Den was your answer, then you are right. Woohoo! 